This lesson is on specific heat. You'll find this in your book in chapter 16, pages 531 to 534. Make sure you are taking notes while you watch this video. Make sure you pause and rewind as needed. And be sure to write down the example problem at the end. Specific heat, the definition is it's the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance, one Celsius degree, or one Kelvin degree. A uh, quick review of temperature, Celsius and Kelvin degrees are the same size. So if you go up one Celsius degree, you will also go up one Kelvin degree. So imagine a gram of a substance, a very small amount. Specific heat is how much it takes that little gram, okay, how much heat it takes to raise its temperature up, just one degree. Okay, this is a constant, so you will find a list of these in your book. Many times these are given to you if you know the substance, or you can look them up if you know the substance. The symbol for specific heat is a capital C with a subscript P, and the P there uh, stands for constant pressure. So all of our specific heat values, all of our constants, are at constant pressure, so the pressure is not changing. Units for specific heat, because it's an amount of energy or heat, it's measured in joules, and it's per mass and temperature degree. So joules per gram degrees Celsius, or joules per gram Kelvin. Sometimes you'll see it written like this, with the joules on top, and then grams Kelvin on the bottom, or degrees Celsius like this. So in order to calculate it, you're going to use an equation. The equation, Q stands for heat, heat's measured in joules. Q equals the specific heat times the mass of the substance in grams times the change in temperature. To calculate the change in temperature, you would take the final minus the initial temperature. So let's make note of that. TF is the final temperature and TI is the initial temperature. So final at the end, initial would be at the start. It does matter the order when you subtract. A list of specific heats are in your book on page 533 for certain substances. Um, water is a very common one. It's first on that list. It is 4.184 joules per grams Kelvin. Um, other things on that list are things like ammonia, ethanol, aluminum, calcium, copper, iron, mercury. So, some things about Q to know. So, heat is Q. And heat, or Q, can be either positive or negative signs. So, you can have a number with either a positive or negative. And the sign depends on if it's being absorbed or released. Heat can go into something, or it can be released from something. So, imagine what it feels like to you. If heat is being absorbed, it's going to feel cold. If heat is being released, it's going to feel warm. You are in the area where the heat is either going to or away. If it's being absorbed, you're feeling where the heat left, so it feels cold to you. If it feels warm, it's because heat is coming out to you. It's being released to you. So which sign is which? So if Q is being absorbed, heat is going in, will the temperature increase or decrease? The temperature will increase. Think about if it's going in into the system, the temperature in there is going to go up, which would mean Q is positive. This is what we call an endothermic reaction. If Q is being released, what will the temperature do? Well, it will do the opposite. Q is being released within the system. Heat is leaving, so the temperature is actually going to go down because heat is leaving, so the temperature will decrease and Q will then be negative. These Qs, positive and negative, will be the same sign as your uh, delta T, your change in temperature. So the change in temperature for an endothermic reaction will be positive, and the change in temperature for an exothermic reaction will be negative. Um, ways to remember this. If you look at the prefix endo, endo means in. 
Think of an endoskeleton. You have an endoskeleton that is inside your body. Exo means out. Some kids remember this. They think of exit, like you go out. Exo means out, like an exoskeleton, like some insects have. So the Q value, the sign for it, you will have to choose the correct sign for Q. So it might say in a problem that Q is being absorbed, so then you know that the value is positive, or it might say it's being released. It might talk about the temperature increasing. The temperature is increasing, Q will be positive. If it says the temperature is decreasing, or you look at the numbers and it is decreasing, the Q will be negative. The only time you won't have to choose the sign is if you're solving for Q. Then it will work out mathematically to either be positive or negative. So let's do one example problem. So pause here and write down the problem before I go through it. So the problem says, determine the specific heat of a material if a 35 gram sample released 96 joules as it was cooled from 313 Kelvin to 292 Kelvin. So best way to do these problems is to write out your given information. Some students like to underline all the numbers to help them remember what they need to write down. So it helps to do it on the side. I always do it on the left. 35 gram sample. That would be the mass. And it released 96 joules. So joules, we're talking about the heat. It is released. So Q is negative 96 joules. This is what I was talking about, choosing the sign. Negative because it's being released. Negative is always going to go out. And it was cooled from 313 Kelvin. So that is our starting, our initial temperature. And then it's going down to 292. So that is our final temperature. Okay. So things we're going to have to determine. Well, we want to find the C sub P, the specific heat. In order to do that, we're going to also need to know our change in temperature. So, starting off with my change in temperature, I'm going to take the final and subtract the initial from it. So, I will take 292 Kelvin minus 313 Kelvin. Many students want to just take the larger number and subtract the smaller number from it. Be careful with that. Read the words in the problem. This will give you negative 21 Kelvin. And I'm not going to have any numbers after the decimal because when we add and subtract, we look at numbers after the decimal, the minimum, or the one with the lowest amount, not significant digits. Now I can calculate my C sub P based on my equation. Q equals C sub P times the mass times the change in temperature. I'm going to rearrange the cell for C sub, B, C sub P with the variables, not with the numbers, because I like to write less. So I need to get C sub P by itself on one side of the equation. I'm going to divide by mass and change in temperature. So anything divided by itself will divide out. If you do it to one side of the equation, you have to do it to the other. So I'm going to rewrite this. The specific heat equals the heat divided by the mass and the change in temperature. Now I'm going to put my numeric values in. So Q on top would be negative 96 joules divided by the mass, 35 grams, and the change in temperature we found to be negative 21 Kelvin. The bottom numbers, as you're multiplying them, are essentially in parentheses even if they're not written. I just wrote them in to help us see that. When you divide by them, you can either choose to do negative 96 in your calculator, divide it by, and then put in parentheses, 35 times negative 21 in parentheses, or you could divide by both numbers, negative 96 joules divided by 35 grams divided by negative 21 Kelvin. Please take the time right now to type this into your calculator and make sure you get the right answer, which is 0.13. I'm carrying two sig digs because all my numbers have two. I always go with the lowest. And units, nothing cancels out. Joules on top divided by grams and Kelvin.